Hello dear programmers, how are you doing today? Welcome to my channel and topic of this video is declarative versus imperative programming. Of late we are hearing these terms quite a lot in programming world. For example, someone will come to you and say that, okay, React.js is totally declarative in nature. And someone will also say that while writing your JavaScript code, you can use declarative syntax rather than using imperative one. So let's go ahead and understand what exactly is meant by these two programming paradigms and then we can decide accordingly which one is better for our own purpose. To properly understand the concept of declarative versus imperative programming, we will consider a real world scenario. The real world scenario is where someone is proposing someone. So people can propose in multiple ways, but I will talk about two specific ways of doing it. Let's talk about the first way. The first way is one where a person goes and directly say, will you marry me? So the person who is giving the proposal will directly say, will you marry me? And in another way, the person who is giving the proposal can say that, okay, you know, I was thinking blah, 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 then people in love, blah, blah, blah. So shouldn't we get married? So there is nothing difference between these two because the end result of these two is that a proposal is given to a person with the intention of asking a question, will you marry me? But you can see there is a difference, right? In the first case, it's straightforward, short to the point that will you marry me? That's all. But in the second case, someone has to go through all the statement the person is making to understand that, okay, that person is trying to propose and asking, will you marry me? So the first statement is called declarative programming. The second statement is called imperative programming. So in case of declarative programming, you just go ahead and do what you want to do directly without bothering about background, foreground or anything like that. But in case of imperative programming, you want to create an environment, think about the background, make yourself comfortable and then you want to say that. So if you have to take care of all those things, these are imperative programming. And if you just go ahead and do what you want to do in a short, single, sweet way, you just say, will you marry me? And it's called declarative programming. We'll go ahead and see it in the code, but I was forced to give this example because I am damn sure that you'll be able to understand what I'm trying to say. And with this, you will never forget what is the difference between declarative programming and imperative programming. So let's go ahead and see the code. So welcome to the code. And in this particular code section, I will show you the code in two language, C++ as well as in JavaScript so that we can understand the idea of declarative versus imperative programming is independent of a programming language. Okay. So now I have written a C++ code where I have taken an array and I am creating a for loop which will just multiply each element of the array by two and then I am printing the array value. Similarly, in JavaScript, I am creating a function called main and here also I create an array with the same set of values. Here also, I create a for loop which will multiply each and every element of the array by two and then I'll print the values. So let me go ahead, compile and run. So this is my C++ compilation and you see that I get the output as 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, which is multiply by 2. Similarly, I'll just compile and run my JavaScript code and you can see that I get the same output. This code is actually imperative in nature because you know what is being done and you have to read through each and every line to understand what is being done over here. Now let's first go to our JavaScript code. If I just get rid of this for loop. So what I will do over here is that I'll say value equal to value dot map and I create a function which gives me the value and I will write return value into two. Okay. Now if I go ahead and run my code again, I'll get the same output. Now this is called declarative programming because you can see that I have neither written for loop over here nor managing the variable count value, initial value, last value and so on and so forth. So constructs like these are termed as declarative programming because the code you write is exactly what you want to have as part of that function output. You want to multiply everything by two. Here you are multiplying everything by two without bothering about variables or something like that. Similarly, we can do the same thing in C++. 
To have declarative syntax in C++, you need to use STL API. I am using algorithm over here. So in here, I'll remove this for loop and I'll call transform function uh, with first value, uh, last value and output will be again same and I'll create a lambda function over here which gives me a value. And here also what I will do, I'll multiply value by 2. So let me go ahead and compile this. Sorry, I have to give address of it all the place. And if I go ahead and run, you can see that I get the same output. So if you are not very familiar with transform function, I have created a separate video for that. I will give the link in the description. So here also what I did is that I just did what I wanted to achieve out of this function. Though I have to call this function with some constructs, but again, the amount of code I write is only to make sure that I achieve what I want to achieve. So this is the declarative way of writing the same code without the for loop and taking care of many other things which I have written earlier in C++ as well as in JavaScript. So I hope I was able to explain the difference between declarative and imperative programming. If you have any question, queries or comment, please feel Feel free to write it in comment section. I reply to all the comments that is on my YouTube videos. So thanks a lot guys. Thanks for watching. Please take a moment to like, share, comment and subscribe. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.